what a year, what a series God has had us on. You know, on the surface, a series called Reset seems so easy. It doesn't seem challenging or deep. But wow, has God been challenging us over the last few weeks. You know, we looked at the, the necessity that, that we, we face in the moment that we're living. That God, he has incredible plans for our lives. And we want to be functioning as great as we possibly can. The reality that the comparison I've come up with is is kind of that of a computer where we've got a computer with all these applications running. And because there's so much going on, it bogs down the processor and the computer doesn't really function well. And we can't print a paper or we can't type or browse the Internet because all the stuff that's going on. And I believe that God is calling us to fulfillment, but I believe that he's also calling us to be very intentional about resetting ourselves. We talked about the importance of the reset in our heart or the, the eternal reset we have that oftentimes we've allowed a sin application to run in our lives. It's an application that eats away at all the good that we want to accomplish, but we've let it continue to run. And we talked about how imperative it is for the body of Christ to confess and repent from our sin. You know, when we stepped on toes, I figured I'd step on toes more. And last week I talked about this powerful tool that's in our mouth, the power of life and death that's in our tongues. Recognizing that in our tongues there is power for life and death and that I can use my tongue for good or I can use my tongue for evil. I want my tongue to be in line with the will of God. This week we're going to continue to look at another area of all of, of us that we we need to look at, that we need to reset, that we need to be aware of. You know, as a body, this year we spent some time in, in Hebrews chapter 12. In verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith for the joy set before him he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And the reality that I believe many within the body of Christ are dealing with is in verse 2, it says we need to be fixing our eyes on Jesus. The reset I want to talk about today is a reset of our eyes. I understand that, that in this particular passage, when he says fixing our eyes on Jesus, he's talking about looking intently at him. But the, but the, the sermon, the series, this moment, I believe that God is telling us that we need to fix our eyes. Not just fix them on Jesus, but really look at our eyes and be intentional about what our eyes are looking about and looking at and what our eyes aren't looking at. You know, in Matthew chapter 23, about verse 16 through 26, Jesus is speaking to Pharisees. And five times in those verses, he calls them blind. He's saying to them, you need to fix your eyes. Verse 26 is really where the, the emphasis comes. He calls them blind Pharisee, first cleaning the inside of the cup and dish. And then the outside will also be clean. The reality that Jesus is pointing out is that we have to be intentional about what our eyes are seeing. You know, Matthew chapter 6 in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says your eyes are a lamp for the body. If your eyes are full of light, your body is full of light. But if they're full of darkness, your body is full of darkness. Body of Christ, I'm telling you, we have to be intentional about our our eyes. Sometimes we let so much garbage come into us through our eyes. So much darkness, so many challenges we allow to come in us through our eyes. We recognize it, we realize it, but we're okay with it. It's time to fix our eyes. 
It's time for us. In, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, For this very reason, make every effort. We must make every effort to fix our eyes, to add to your faith, goodness, goodness, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection, and then to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have these qualities, that's the, the goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection, and love, whoever does not have these is nearsighted and blind forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. One of the challenges we see throughout Scripture is the problem of spiritual blindness, where we cannot see what God is truly doing, where we're overwhelmed by something that causes us to miss what God desires us to see in this moment. When you think of, uh, of Numbers chapter 13, you've got Caleb and some spies that are sent in to the promised land. They, they find grapes that they have to literally carry on a, on, a, on a log, carried between them, the bunch of grapes. But when they come out, they're blinded by the giants that were there. And so all the spies but Caleb are too afraid to take what God intends for them to have. They are blinded by the obstacles that are set before them. You know, John chapter 4, Jesus is talking to his disciples and they're blinded by, by simply the necessities of life. In verse 31 of chapter uh, 4, he says, Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's four months until the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look to the fields for they are ripe for the harvest. You see, the, the disciples were so consumed with their needs. They couldn't see the harvest that was set before them. Church, I believe there's many of us in, 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 in our places in life that the fields are absolutely ripe for the harvest, but our eyes are blinded by necessity, by routine, by ritual, whatever it might be. We're not seeing things the way God is seeing them. All that I would open my eyes. All that I would see what Christ sees. All that I would recognize the harvest that God has set before me. Not only do we get blinded by obstacles and blinded by necessity, but sometimes we're blinded by the enemy. There's a story in 2 Kings chapter 6, and, and the king of Aram, he, he's upset with Elisha, and he's coming after Elisha, and Elisha and his servant are surrounded by the Aramean army. And Elisha's servant is frightened, he's scared, and, and, and Elisha's got this cool, calm demeanor about him, and the servant says, why aren't you scared? What's the problem? And Elisha prays a profound prayer. He says, open his eyes, God, that he can see. And suddenly the, the servant's eyes were open to a spiritual reality that was always there. And, and he began to see the horses and the fiery chariots that were surrounding him and Elisha in that moment. You know, we need to fix our eyes. I wonder what God is doing that we're missing. I wonder the armies that are surrounding us, the fields that are ripe, the promises that God intends to fulfill. But my eyes and your eyes aren't fixed. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, we, we don't lose heart. 
Though outwardly we're wasting away, inwardly we're being renewed day by day because our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I need to fix my eyes on the eternal things of God. I don't want to be the Pharisees in Matthew 23 that he calls blind, that he says you're missing everything that you need to see because you're so focused on all that is. I don't want to be the, the spies that miss out on the promise of God or, or the, the servant that is compelled by fear, but I want to walk by faith. I want to receive all that God has. I want to see what God desires to show me. I want to be compelled by his love. Second Corinthians chapter 5 says, For Christ's love compels us because we're convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but live for him who died and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. How are your eyes? What are you seeing? Are you allowing darkness in? Or are you focusing on the eternal things of God? You know, we do need to fix our eyes. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. We need to fix our eyes from the things that we're seeing. I believe we need to reset. The Lord bless you and keep you may make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, may turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. And may you fix your eyes, fix them on Jesus and fix them on the, the eternal things of God. Be blessed.